Melanie Richards from the Gabriel China Fox News Channel was over at my place for a late Thanksgiving on Friday, the November 29th. She came over about four o'clock in the afternoon, and um, we I kept it a secret because I wanted her to be safe. Because last time she came, the Jesuits shot missiles at her car as she drove on the freeway to go up. When when they come to visit me, they uh, they actually vaporize onto the road and then you know drive out to see me. And um, last time when she was on the freeway and about to be transported up to Church of Gale from the freeway, the Jesuits shot missiles at her and actually um, shot down a whole school bus full of children while they were trying to get her. And that's because they knew about the visit. So I, I didn't t talk about the visit. I didn't want to keep her safe. And she had, the Jesuits didn't attack her this time. But we had a great time. I spent a lot of the time grilling her about my men and what it's like to live at Church of Gale, and she told me all the details of that. But beforehand, Brent Skyped me and said that Melanie wanted to come over for Thanksgiving, that we're kind of alike, and that a lot of our family members have been isolated from us by the Jesuits. And so I got the recipes in advance. I told her to get the ingredients for Pasta Primavera for a tomato mozzarella salad, but she decided to make it a sweet peppers mozzarella salad and for um, salmon, grilled salmon, and all Italian recipes. So she got the ingredients. I, I gave her a list of the ingredients I needed, and she said she would go to the store and buy them. I said, do you want to take me out to a restaurant? She says, no, I think I want a home-cooked meal. See, what happened is Tom McGovern came over to my place in October and I hosted him for a week. He actually stayed at a at a different place. He was out, you know, further away from me and he would drive in from his cottage. He rented a cottage for a week and he came over and I cooked for him. And I, because of him, he spread the word around. He, he says that I'm a good cook and he brought some of my cooking, I believe, to Church of Gale and I don't know what happened, but he, the word spread around, the word has gotten around Church of Gale that I am a gourmet cook. <laughs> so when Melanie, I, I said, well, Melanie, what do you want to do for Thanksgiving? She says, I would like a home-cooked meal. I said, really? I said, well, my budget's kind of tight right now. So she says, that's okay. I'll buy the ingredients. So uh, I wrote down the ingredients, what I needed, you know, and it was a list. She was prompt on time, four o'clock, and she caught me in the middle of vacuum cleaning. And I said, excuse me, I'm just tidying up real quick because I, this was a busy day for me and I had to deal with my car. Oh, by the way, with my car, with that gas gauge, that wasn't Jesus. The gas gauge was broken. In other words, when my tank is full, it says it's empty. So I'm going to have to keep track of mileage and, you know, just make sure that <laughs> I can't rely on the gas gauge. So that's what's wrong with my car. <laughs> I have plenty of gas in there. It's just the gas gauge is broken. It says it's empty even when I have a full tank. When I called out my um, uh, Geico, the, um, what do they call it, roadside assistance to come out and give me some gas in my tank, I actually, they put the gas in the tank and the gas gauge stayed right on empty. Then I went out to the gas station and put more gas in the tank, and it still stayed on empty. So I thought, wow, my gas gauge is messed up. Okay, so that's what happened with that. So Jesus, sorry for accusing you of emptying my tank. It wasn't him. Okay, it uh, wasn't vandals either, because I have a locking gas cap. So, <laughs> okay, now back to Melanie. So Melanie, I started, uh, you know, I was grilling uh, Melanie because I wanted to know all about Church of Gale. What's it like to live on Church of Gale? Tell me what's on each floor. What is it like to live in a residence? And she was telling me all about Church of Gale. And um, I was telling her, tell me what Brent, Brent's place looks like. And tell me what Terrence's place looks like. She said, oh, Brent's place looks like just a regular old home. You know, he, he's, he's pretty humble. He's not real conspicuous. She said, for being a big celebrity, He's not all, you know, his place is pretty humble. She said, Terrence looks like, place looks like a big city apartment. And so she gave me this detailed description of what it was like to live at Church of Gale. And um, 
tell, she told me about the salmon pond and the waterfalls on the first level. And then there's like a, a huge walkway where you can go up to the, the seventh level is where they all live, where they all have their residences. And, um, and then from at the very top is the Gabriel Chana for Fox News Channel. And she said it's really high tech. She said it makes the regular Fox News Channel news station look like like garbage. She said it's it's really fancy looking. I said, oh, it's kind of like Bill Gates' Microsoft Office or something like that. She said, yeah, something like that. And she said it's huge. The whole seventh, uh, the whole top floor, uh, the top level of the um, Church of Gale is the Gabriel Chana Fox News Channel, which is where she works. And she says she has to, she puts in about 12 hour days. I said, what do you do for the Gabriel Chana Fox News Channel? She says she runs errands. She's not a broadcaster, but she runs errands. And um, she does, um, you know, all, all the like, she, she, write, she will write some scripts, I think. But she told me she's thinking of possibly going into med a medical field. I said, are you going to leave journalism? She says, no, I just might do more than one thing. Kind of like what Brent's doing where he's a doctor and, you know, and he works as an actor too. So anyway, she was telling me all about that. And then she said, can I help you with cooking? She says, because I said, well, I was chopping away. The first thing I did is I started chopping. She got bought a big bag of sweet peppers, little sweet peppers. And it was taking me forever to chop them all up. So we were, ch so I said, oh yeah, she said, can I help? She said, yeah, you can help me. So I handed her some, um, some squash. I said, chop it up real s small and strip like, because we're going to use that for the pasta prima bear. Here's some garlic. I said, chop. I said, to, to make sure you take all the skin off. And then she chopped the broccoli for me, and then I was chopping the peppers and onions and garlic, and we we spent like hours chopping, and because you do a lot of chopping, this is all authentic Italian cuisine I was making. So, and we got some fresh lemon, and we squeezed that, and she brought most of the food in, and she also brought a bottle of white wine, but I didn't have to use that for any recipe. So she said, "Well, maybe you can use it for another recipe." I said, "Yeah, maybe," but. And she didn't and she didn't bring the red wine vinegar. I said, that's okay, let's try some Japanese rice vinegar. I think that'll work, work really good with this salad. So and then so what I did is I put a layer of chopped a uh, thinly sliced red onion on the bottom of the salad. Then I put the salad, which was a bunch of chopped sweet peppers and um, mozzarella cheese and a little bit of capers, and I threw in um uh, then I drizzled it with some olive oil and uh, uh, Japanese rice vinegar dressing and put it all over there. I put some other ingredients in some capers and it was, uh, and oh, chopped fresh basil. And so that was the salad and some other ingredients. And then we worked on the pasta primavera, which was um, sweet peppers, mushrooms, uh, sliced squash, sliced broccoli, uh, lots of garlic, freshly squeezed lemon juice. Uh, then I cooked the p a pasta, which was al dente. <laughs> I really got into Italian cooking for Franco Nero, so I got really good at making. And Melanie loves Italian food, so I said we'll do that. And um, so for and then we got the salmon ready. She didn't. She said I couldn't find steaks. She said, do they exist? I said they do in the Pacific Northwest, so it's hard to find it in Florida. So we got fillets instead. I said that's okay. We'll we'll. I usually don't follow recipes exactly anyway, so we'll kind of fudge it a little bit. So I, I got the steaks. I marinated it with a little bit of olive oil, put in some capers on it, um, uh, some pepper. Uh, I can't remember what else I put on there. <laughs> it was, but it, it was authentic Italian cuisine. Actually, what did I do with that recipe? Good Lord. Do I have it here? Um, oh, oh. Oh, well, I'm going by memory, and, you know, we're trying, oh, here it is, right? No, that's not it. Well, anyways, it it was basically salmon with a dressing and some capers, and it was uh, grilled in the oven. So we took it all out, and Melanie said, wow, this is really good. This was authentic Italian cuisine. No, we, and uh, she said, you are a good cook. I said, I said, you want, you want some doggy bags? And, you know, she's pretty thin. She's got like a flat waist, so I, she's not a big eater. So I thought, boy, I thought you didn't eat a lot. She says, well, normally I don't, but this is really good. <laughs> so she, she was eating and eating. And I said, well, do you want? I, had, I said, I didn't have time to make homemade dessert. Do you want some key lime pie? 
She goes, mm, I actually think I prefer your cookings. Anyways, what she did was I gave her three containers full of the pasta primavera. I gave her a, a big jar uh, that I put in a lot of the salad. The, it, it was the sweet peppers mozzarella salad. And um, the key to good Italian cooking is fresh ingredients, fresh garlic, fresh lemon juice, fresh herbs, like we used fresh basil, and uh, fresh fish, everything fresh, <laughs> and extra virgin olive oil, and if you always cook your pasta al dente, which means just firm enough, you know, but not, yeah. She, she accidentally, accidentally goofed and threw in too much pasta in the water. I said, that's okay. We'll just use a little bit more pasta, and then I'll have some left over for tomorrow. Anyways, so she brought she brought the food to Church of Gale, and she stopped by Brent Spiner's headquarters and gave him one of the cans of my pasta primavera, one of the salmon fillets, and some of the salad. And Brent told me, Gail, it was delicious. I said, well, I'm flattered. I'm glad you got some of my cooking. I've always wanted to cook for you, Brent. And Brent met with Jesus for lunch. And Jesus took a, wanted a bite of everything. And as soon as Jesus tasted it, he was so impressed. He waved his hands, and suddenly the whole table was filled with platters of everything that I had cooked. Brent said there was enough salmon, pasta, and salad to feed all the men on the marriage list. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, Terence Dickinson. He was, and Brent and I decided to make a three-way. Now, um, when we say three-way, we're talking about Skype, not sex. And Zach, Zach is taking everything that I say and twisting it and making it appear perverted. He, he said, when I made a comment that I wanted a three-way, he's saying at his church of Gale that I'm referring to sex. I was referring to Skype, because what happens is sometimes Brent and Terrence will both Skype me at the same time, and I'll, I'll say, do you want to make it a three-way? That means do you want to make it a group call. That's what that means. Don't pay attention to Zach. Um, anyway, so Terrence started and said, oh, my goodness, you got some leftovers. So, you know, because Jesus multiplied it, kind of like he does the loaves and the fishes. Teran said, wow. He said, this is great. <laughs> and, um, uh, I said, well, what, tell me what my men said about it. I'm really flattered. He says, um, and Teran said, I'd be eating more of that wonderful pasta. He said, the men all put away leftovers in their fridges. So I said, which men on my marriage list got to taste my cooking? I'm dying of curiosity. He said, Gerard Butler, Matthew McConaughey, Vladimir Putin, Hugh Jackman, Keanu Reeves. And then um, and then he said, you know, I, I know they was rushing into the kitchen when I was going to nap. I wish they would have told me. And I said, I am really honored. You know, Matthew McConaughey is a gourmet cook. What did he say? He said he's never tasted anything like it. It made him feel humbled about his own cooking. I thought, wow. I said, I sure don't deserve this. I said, but thanks, Jesus, for doing this for my men. It's made them feel more a part of me. That is the best part. My cooking is a large part of who I am. He said, yeah, this feels like I'd be tasting a bit of gale, Terrence Jenkins said. And I said, yep, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. He said, I'd be eating right now, and I'd be a, it'd be a taste of heaven for sure. I said, it's kind of like, you know, them being able to experience me more firsthand. It kind of makes up for the fact that I'm not with them. And, and Brent said, Vladimir said something like, if my erect could eat, I would prefer this food. <laughs> so this has made my night and my week. I wish I could do this more often for my men. Um, I said, you got to give Melanie some credit. She helped me with the cutting, but I was her teacher. We had tons of chopping to do. So... Anyways, I just have to tell you that, that Jesus was proud of my cooking. <laughs> and Melanie and I had a great time. And then she uh, actually spent some time on the Gabriel Chana Fox News Channel talking about me, saying that she was very happy to be with her idol. 